Hi guys, welcome back to 10 Minute Reviews. Jason here bringing you today's video. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Please, 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 please. This is our passion project. This is our family channel. We just love to talk about books. As you can tell, I'm in front of our alternate bookshelf, not in our main library. Uh, one of five alternate bookshelves. I've got the kid here so I can't film in the library without keeping him awake, um, which I don't want to do because I'd like to get some sleep at some point. So today, I, uh, I want to talk about a series. I'm not going to talk about one book. I'm going to talk about a series, or at least the first three-ish books. Um, and it, we're going back into sci-fi. And uh, um, as always, I'm going to talk about four things. I'm going to talk about the world. I'm going to talk about the character. It's going to be complicated. I'm going to talk about the, uh, uh, the plot line. It's also going to be complicated. And I'm going to talk about the, the writing style. Okay? And... Uh, this one is, uh, the series is the Bobbyverse. It's the Bobbyverse, based okay. around Bob. Um, and <laughs> the world, the world, it's, it's our world, but it's, it's futurish. It's, it's, it's very, very futurish. Um, I'm not saying, you know, millions of years in the future or anything like that, but figure centuries into the future. I can't remember the exact date, because they do give it, but figure centuries into the future, because the, the, uh, the technology has progressed, but most of it is still recognizable, and the progression is things that, that we, we would already as now think of as theoretically possible someday, because it shows up in a lot of science fiction, um, which leads me into the character. Okay? And I say character because, again, this is the Bobbyverse. The character is, well, Bob. Um, and uh, um, basically what you have is you have a character, you have somebody that died. They died, and then they discovered, they woke back up. They woke back up a few uh, you know, centuries later, but they woke up in a new body-ish kind of way. I mean, it's really hard to, to, to say without, well, I'll just say, wakes up in a robot body, basically. So basically, this is the, the point where we've gone into the future, and we can take a dead person's brain and brain patterns and and put them into a a robot body into a a robot creature and that's that's what it is they, he he has been reborn as this this um this robot and he what he decides what he discovers is that basically by whatever laws have been passed over these centuries um cuz the character had cryogenically frozen themselves, right? Bob had frozen himself, which is something that people do now um, in the hopes of being reborn one day. Well, he is. But somewhere within the intervening century or so, laws were passed, and he that he became property. His brain patterns became property. Um, since he, he himself could not be reborn, his brain patterns were uploaded into a robot, and they chose him uh, because other ones experimentally had failed. This is basically a science fiction geek. Um, and they would hope that this would would work out better because previous iterations, previous attempts of this failed uh, because basically they went insane. I mean, just imagine if you you wake up and you were in a robot about this about this big because that's pretty much how it starts. Um, now, that's the character. Now, there's other characters because eventually he will further on, I'll get into the, I'll get into to the, the whys and, and the plot, but he, he will eventually almost clone himself, but because of basically programming Drift, um, even by cloning himself, they end up with distinct personalities, and, and they all start choosing different, I mean, you got Bobby or Robert, Robbie, stuff like that, but then you've got, you know, the Star Trek nerd decides to call himself Riker, um, and, uh, um, and that leads into the plot, so the plot of this is, there's some trouble, they, and, and they, we need to get off that. We need to start exploring. We need to start figuring out how to colonize and stuff like that. And, you know, how do we do it? Unmanned probes, stuff like that, they're just not working very well. So they decide to kind of do a manned probe. They, they basically create artificial intelligence with real intelligence. They take this brain, they upload it into the computer that they up, then put into a spaceship. And this spaceship has the job, basically, the goal of exploration and helping humanity to to survive and to move on, to colonize, things along those lines. Now, um, they got a few, of course, they have a VR um, situation to help them not go crazy. And um, 
one of the things I really like is that, again, they use a lot of technology that we have now and some things that make absolute, absolute, absolute sense. In the far future, when we go somewhere to, say, colonize or something along those lines, we're not going to have nanomachines. We're not going to throw a missile full of nanomachines onto the Mars surface and it's just going to start eating up everything and building, building buildings. Now, you know what we're going to have? We're going to have 3D printers. That's what we're going to be using, 3D printers. So that's the primary driving force at first for Bob is the 3D printers because um, that's what he, he prints himself a new body. Then he copies himself, and boom, he's now got a brand new personality, a brand new new being. And uh, they can also, within their VR worlds, because they're, they're computers, they can, of course, think faster. They could do some pretty complex science and reasoning stuff in a very short amount of time. Again, they're supercomputers, basically. So that's the overall arching plot, at least through the very beginning of it, as he starts going out to explore... Um, Eventually, he has to create uh, uh, weapons, but what he creates is, is pretty clever and also fairly, extremely, extraordinarily basic um, that, again, we could do with today's technology. So he stays very well within the realms of actual science. Um, they do eventually come across other... Uh, um, they do finally once come across a sentient life form. Um, and then eventually, as, they continue to, as he continues to clone himself and he has further generations, eventually they start figuring things out like faster than light travel. Um, they do figure out faster than light communications. Um, eventually he figures out, they figure out a way. Some of them become devoted solely to science. They eventually figure out ways to, say, create robot bodies that they can then control. So, and to, basically, they, they, they start trying to almost bring themselves alive um, in a way. And uh, through some parts of the books, they have to deal with, you know, with your evil earthling people uh, um, and attacks on them. Other, other parts of the series they deal with, with transporting humanity to another planet and helping them survive at the initial stages of the colonizations um, and, and humanity kind of expands out and eventually they kind of, they, they kind of make that agreement with humanity too is you know we're not, we're not your caretakers you know yes you created us but we are they, they don't outright say it but they control the high orbitals. They have. They 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 can create their own bodies. They they created these these massive ships that they use. Um, they, they basically they're in charge. And these 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 colonies couldn't survive without them. And definitely couldn't defeat them. It's already been tried once um, on Earth to take one over. Um, and they basically make this deal of you know we'll help you colonize. We'll help you survive. We'll help help the 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 people that we come from. But then after that, we're done. And we're talking centuries of time has passed throughout these books. Um, they say, after that, we're done. We're done being your servants. We're not your butlers. We want to go out and explore. We want to, to uh, um, just go focus on our science if that's what we want to focus on or, or focus on, on exploration or focus on, on just this planet that we just want to um, terraform. You know, they want to have th their own lives. They, they, they're alive and they realize they're alive. And they're they're immo functionally immortal. And... And, um, and that's the overall plot. As far as the writing style goes, absolutely hilarious. One of the, the, uh, um, one of the funniest writers that I have read in quite a long time while still maintaining a very, very strong science hold within these books and you know the interactions with the characters and, and how they talk to each other and, and how they make decisions and the thinking and the science behind it and all that extremely well written it's very very gripping when you when you start book one of the bobby verse you will find yourself finishing book three of the bobby verse before you even blink because you just you you're you're, you're not going to want to put it down then you're going to immediately order the second one and download it and you're not going to want to put it down you can immediately order the third one and then download it and then theoretically, you feel like you're done. But the reason this is popping back up and I'm doing this, this review is because book four just got released. I didn't know he was even planning on doing a book four. Um, there's a big gap since he, he finished book three, so I'm looking forward to it. But the first three are definitely a very, very finite series and, and close. So please hit the like and subscribe buttons and uh, go check out the Bobbyverse. It's absolutely great reading. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye now.